right, this is our last video for AP Chemistry, and this is just um, a brief overview of electrolysis, which you can find in section 18.8 .8 in your textbook. All right, I mentioned when I first introduced electrochemical cells that electrolysis or um, electrolytic <clears throat> cells, sorry, are um, electrochemical cells where we're using um, electricity or the power from a battery to run the current backwards to um, drive a non-spontaneous reaction. So um, in an electrolytic cell, the electrical current drives an otherwise non-spontaneous re redox reaction through um, the opposite process, which we call electrolysis. Okay, so here I have a, a diagram of both a voltaic cell and an electrolytic cell. The vo voltaic cell is what we've been dealing with so far, and you can see we have the anode on the left and the cathode on the right, and the electrons flow from anode to cathode. All right, and when they do that, um, if we were measuring the current with a voltmeter, you could see um, that that current would there would be a measurable current. So in an electrolytic cell, we now replace the voltmeter or whatever um, we want to power with the voltage source. So this could be a car battery, it could be just a you know a dry cell battery, um, it could be you know plugging in, plugging it into a wall. It doesn't matter. But in this case, now you notice that. Um, it's still the zinc and copper reaction. Um, the two, those two half cells are the same, but now the anode is on the right and the cathode is on the left, and that's because since we're running the reaction backwards, we're now um, oxidizing copper instead of oxidizing zinc. So electrolytic cells work the same way. You have the same half reactions that you did before. We're just running the reaction in the opposite direction in the non-thermodynamically favored direction by putting in power. Now the main thing that I want to highlight with the electrolysis is that we can use stoichiometry um, with electrolysis reactions to figure out how much um, of the electrons are moved and therefore how that's going to affect the mass of the reactant or product. Okay, so the example that I have here is um, copper 2 plus um, being uh, reduced to copper solid, and that's being done here um, in this in this picture here. You can see that um, the electrons are moving from the solid copper on the left through the wire via the battery um, to this spoon over here where we're going to copper plate it. Um, and so in this particular reaction, every time two moles of electrons move through our um, system, we're going to plate one mole of copper. Okay, so electrons are a little bit different than the other reactants we've worked with in the past because we can't measure a volume or a mass or anything like that for electrons. But what we can do is use um, the current and also Faraday's constant to figure out how many moles of electrons have moved. Okay, so um, current is measured in amps and an amp is one coulomb per second. Okay, so if we take our current times the time that it has, um, that our reaction has gone, uh, has been going, then current times time would be coulombs per second times seconds, which is just going to give us coulombs. Okay, and then Faraday's constant tells us that there are 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. So we can use that as a, a conversion factor to get to moles of electrons. Okay, so I'll do an example on the next slide, but I just wanted to go through all of those quantities um, so you can see how this is going to work. All right, so the example I have here is gold can be plated out of a solution containing Au3+, plus, according to the half reaction, Au3+, plus, plus three electrons, goes to Au solid. Okay, and the question is what mass of gold in grams is plated if we have a 25-minute flow of 5.5 amps current? Okay. So the information we're given here, or the relationships that we're going to need, are that three moles of electrons corresponds to one mole of gold. All right, we'll need that as a conversion factor. We know that our current, which is coulombs per second, is 5.5. So an amp is the same as a coulomb per second. And then we know that our time for um, this reaction is 25 minutes. All right, so 25 minutes is where we're going to start because that's the thing that would potentially vary. The longer this reaction goes, the more gold is going to be plated, the shorter, the less. So 25 minutes, but our current is in um, 
coulombs per second. So first we want to do um, the 25 minutes times 60 seconds in one minute because that's our conversion factor to seconds. And then we use our current and that's going to be 5.5 .5 coulombs per one second. Okay, and then we know that from Faraday's constant, there are 96,485 coulombs in one mole of electrons. So that will be our conversion factor to get to moles of electrons. And then we just said there's three moles of electrons for every one mole of gold that's plated. Okay, and then the last step, it should be familiar to you, we're just going to use the mass from the periodic table, which is 196.97 grams of gold in one mole. All right, so we, if we multiply all of that out, we get 5.6 grams of gold. Okay, so these are um, a couple of new concepts in these problems, but these are just stoichiometry problems like we did way back in honors chemistry. Uh, so we'll practice a couple of these in class, and um, you'll see some of them on practice test, and then we can, um, hopefully you'll, you'll be more comfortable with them.